Henry Lee Lucas was one of the most bloodthirsty and brutal serial killers in American history. The criminal confessed to the murder of more than 600 people in the period from 1951 to 1983 in the states of Florida, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and Louisiana, but it was possible to fully prove his involvement only in 11 cases. One of these victims was his own mother. After his arrest, and to this day, Henry is considered one of the most terrible psychopaths, not only because of the number of murders he committed, but also because of the hatred present in each of them. However, since all of his crimes could not be confirmed, Henry Lee Lucas is often referred to as a fictional killer. Some say the authorities took advantage of his confession to pin all unsolved cases on him. The life of this killer was a typical story of martyrdom and abuse suffered by most serial killers. The harshness and cruelty he faced as a child was undoubtedly a factor that determined what his future life would be. Henry Lee Lucas was born on August 23, 1937 in Blacksburg, Virginia, USA. He grew up in a poor and completely disorganized family, devoid of any values and full of cruelty. Anderson Lucas lost both legs in an accident at work. After becoming disabled, he no longer earned money, but he began to drink alcohol excessively and did not take any part in the upbringing of his son. Viola Lucas made a living as a prostitute, taking clients right at home. She was a cruel woman, often humiliated and beat her disabled son and husband. She often forced Henry to watch her do her work with clients, at least several times young Henry was molested by some of them. This boy was just one of Viola's nine children, but it was the one who suffered the most from the mother's abuse. It is said that only the oldest of them were Anderson's children, and the rest were the result of Viola's work. The children born in the family did not stay with their mother. Fortunately, most of them were put up for adoption or transferred to the state. Henry didn't have such opportunities, so his childhood was spent in this terrible environment. His mother suffered from constant bouts of anger, which she poured out on the first person she saw. Usually the abuse was directed at her disabled and alcoholic husband, but later she directed it at Henry. So much so that the boy lost his left eye at a very early age due to beatings. Hey, I'm not going to beat around the bush. You have to subscribe to the channel and like it so you don't miss new videos. But according to another version, Henry lost an eye during a beating at school, and his mother did not want to take him to the doctor, which caused him to have an infection and had to have his eyeball removed. In addition to constant bullying and psychological torment, Viola forced her son to dress like a girl. She sent him to school in dresses. Thus, from a young age, Henry became the object of ridicule at school, not only because of his deformed face, but also because of his clothes. And, as if that wasn't enough, his mother also made him watch her do her job with men, some of whom could then afford to start molesting Henry. According to psychologists, these injuries will be decisive in his later sadistic behavior. Being a malnourished child with no education and no one to take care of, he could not develop any skills that would add value or meaning to his life. The horror that he had experienced since childhood led to his first shifts in his head at the age of 13. At this young age, the future maniac has already developed deviant tendencies. The boy began to splash out his sexual activity with dogs and sheep, and after the act he killed. As he would say years later, he took great pleasure in watching them suffer. Since childhood, Henry has associated the act of pleasure with death. In the following years, his life did not improve. In 1950, his father died. The man left the house after a quarrel with his wife and a few days later was found frozen in the woods near the house. After that, Henry, while still a child, finally ran away and from that moment began a life of crime, which did not end until he was caught. Henry Lee Lucas spent his teenage years in correctional institutions and prisons. He started getting into fights and petty theft. In 1954, when he was only 17 years old, he was arrested and imprisoned in Richmond, Virginia, for robbery. He was sentenced to six years in prison, but in 1957 he escaped and took refuge with one of his sisters, who lived in Michigan. However, 
Three months later he was captured. He tried to escape a second time, but his escape was unsuccessful and after serving a five-year sentence, he was released. After being released from prison in 1959, he returned to his sister again. His mother was constantly calling and demanding that he come home. In 1960, she decided to come to them herself, and after a strong argument, Henry brought down all the accumulated rage on her and eventually stabbed her several times, from which the woman died. Thus, she became his first victim. A few days later, he was arrested in Ohio for stealing food from a store. While in custody, the police learned that he was wanted for the murder of his mother, which occurred in Michigan. At the trial, the defense tried to win the sympathy of the jury, relying on the terrible childhood of the killer. However, it was useless. In March 1960, Henry Lee Lucas was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to 20 years in prison. After hearing the verdict, the killer remained calm and never showed signs of regret or remorse. He was sent to the Michigan State Prison, but after two attempts to commit suicide, he was placed in the Ionia State Psychiatric Hospital. In 1970, after spending 10 years in it, he was released on parole. Doctors considered Henry not dangerous to society and there were no complaints about him. By the way, if he had spent this term in prison, he would also have been released after 10 years for good behavior. When he was released from prison, he went to live with his sister again, until a couple of months later she kicked him out for killing her dog. Wherever the next time Henry did not tell, but after three months he was again put in prison, this time for trying to kidnap two teenagers. The maniac was in prison until 1975, when he gained freedom. In those years, he met a widow who had two young daughters. Henry and the woman lived together for a while, and when she went to work, the criminal attacked the girls, but did not kill them. Having escaped from the city after the attack, the psychopath seemed bored with this life, and he decided to travel. Henry began life as a homeless man on American highways. He hitchhiked from place to place and did a variety of jobs, but never stayed in one place for long. Thus, he spent several years of his life passing through 16 different cities. It was at this time that the killer met someone who would become his inseparable friend of crimes and even a lover. Otis Toole was not much different from Henry Lee Lucas. His track record ranged from arsonist to psychopath and murderer. Unsurprisingly, the two characters became close friends. They made an almost perfect couple. Henry was the smart one because Otis suffered from mental retardation, but he was physically stronger, so the qualities of each of them complemented each other, helping to carry out their attacks. The combination of these sick minds has led to terrible consequences. According to what they will later tell after the arrest, together they burned, abused and killed dozens of people in different parts of the country. During one of the periods, the men settled for a while in the house of Tula's mother. That's where Henry met Frida Powell, or whatever her name was, Becky. She was Otis' niece, and was a 15-year-old girl with mental retardation, with whom he later began a romantic relationship. After the death of Otis' mother, the criminals and Becky were forced to return to the streets again. But Tula was not satisfied to go with his niece, because, according to what he confessed many years later, he was in love with Henry. And it was this situation that led to the separation of the couple. Henry and Becky settled in the town of Ringgold in Texas. They started living in the house of an elderly woman named Kate Rich, with whom they became friends. However, after a while, the grandmother's family forced them to leave after learning about the man's criminal past. The couple moved to the town of Stoneburg. There they met a clergyman named Reuben Moore, who not only offered them shelter, but also gave them a job. But Becky didn't like this life very much, and she began to put pressure on Henry to return to Florida. In August 1982, they boarded a bus to leave, but the next day the killer returned to town, saying that Becky had abandoned him. Later it will become known what really happened. After the quarrel, Henry decided to get rid of the girl. After killing her, he took the body to the field and buried it there. Thus, after killing his girlfriend and returning to the city, he attacked the grandmother with whom they lived. Being deceived by Henry's story that he was abandoned, 
the old lady could not refuse the maniac and allowed him to stay with her. The same night, the criminal attacked the pensioner and took her life, after which he abused the body and hid it in a pipe, but a couple of days later decided to burn it. At that time, his arrest was only a matter of time. Grandma's relatives knew who did it, and the neighbors saw that Henry had returned. Two days later, the police detained a man for carrying a weapon and only after the arrest learned that the criminal was accused of murder. The maniac did not deny for a long time and after a couple of interrogations began to confess his crimes. He not only admitted that he was responsible for the death of his grandmother, but also Becky, whom no one was even looking for at that time. The perpetrator gave details about the location of the bodies. And without any pressure, the psychopath confessed to dozens of murders in which he was not even suspected. Henry claimed that he had been killing for 10 years, and then confessed to the murders, which had not been solved until that moment. First he started talking about 10, then about 40, and then the number increased to more than 100. The criminal confessed to all sorts of crimes, but then began to say that it was not true. During the interrogations, Henry also told about his partner. Otis was arrested a few weeks later and gave details of the joint attacks. After long investigations, law enforcement officers were able to prove only 11 crimes, but this was already enough to sentence Henry to death. Otis Tull was involved in five murders, who was also sentenced to death. The date was set for 1998. After the investigation, the killer retracted everything he confessed to, saying that he did it for the fame and attention that it brought him. Although later the criminal assured that the only crime he committed was the murder of his mother. He did not manage to avoid a review of the case, but managed to postpone execution, thanks to which, over time, the death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment, or rather, six life terms and 210 years in prison. On March 13, 2001, as a result of cardiac arrest, the criminal died. On September 15, 1996, Otis Toole died of cirrhosis of the liver in a Florida prison. The confessions of Henry Lee Lucas cause a lot of controversy and discussion. In total, Lucas' involvement in 11 murders was proven. The exact number of his victims until the beginning of 2022 remains unknown. According to Lucas and Tula, traveling in a stolen truck in search of happiness, they killed 97 people in one year. Lucas also claimed that they killed thousands of people. At the end of 2019, the Netflix studio released a documentary about Henry Lee Lucas, which I recommend watching and it is called, Confessions of a Murderer. This film sheds light on his story, revealing some previously unknown facts to the general public, for example, it examines in detail the numerous confessions to the murders that he gave during work with operational services throughout the country. At least 20 of these confessions are definitely false, so murder investigations that were closed after Lucas confessed to them were subsequently reopened and after that the real killers were found. In addition, there is no reliable evidence and evidence indicating the complicity of Henry Lee Lucas in most of the murders he confessed to, the media has exposed some of Lucas' testimony that being false and not being supported by any evidence, were accepted by the police, as the police were trying to close unsolved cases or believed that Lucas had reported facts that only the criminal could know. It is impossible to say how many false confessions Lucas made, and how many real ones.